Well, we have breaking news this hour. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg saying that he regrets caving to pressure from the Biden administration to censor speech online. Meanwhile, our commander in chief is enjoying his second straight vacation, but the White House claims he is still running the country. And this is the big one. Vice President Kamala Harris's shocking new flip-flop when it comes to the border wall. You will not believe it. Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-host, Emily Campagno. Also joining us, Fox Business correspondent Jerry Willis, Fox News contributor and board-certified physician Dr. Nicole Sapphire, and one of my personal favorites, former Arkansas governor and former presidential candidate Mike Huckabee. So good to have him today. Well, listen to this. Vice President Kamala Harris now supports a border wall. She backs a plan to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on Trump's marquee border wall. This was a project that Harris once described this way. This issue mm -hmm. is about a vanity project for this president. Right. Mm -hmm. And it is a problem of his own making. Right. And listen, when I travel this country, Folks have plenty enough problems that they need their president to focus on you know instead of a wall. On the subject of transnational gangs, let's be perfectly clear. The president's medieval vanity project is not going to stop them. We cannot continue to have an administration and a president of the United States who puts his vanity projects ahead of the needs of the people of our country. Let me be very clear, I'm not gonna vote for a wall under any circumstances, and I do support border security, and if we wanna talk about that, let's do that. But now she wants to, quote, build that wall. I mean, will we start hearing that at Harris rallies? She has a history of bashing the border wall. Several years of tweets, look at this, calling it a, quote, waste and stupid. And while Trump rally crowds have been the ones chanting build that wall for almost a decade, Democrats derided them his racist wall at our southern border. Quest for a racist and xenophobic wall. That wall in itself is a racist reaction to a racist myth. No matter how you feel about, a, about the wall, you know, I think it's a moral abomination. America cannot simply build walls. Uh, we look foolish uh, to the rest of the world. The medieval wall, which you can't see through, across the length of the southern border will not make us any safer. We have to do something other than building a wall that's immoral, expensive, ineffective, and not something that people do between countries. A wall is an immoral uh, symbol for our country. Okay. So why the sudden epiphany? Perhaps it's a, it has something to do with this. Headlines since February saying that people support the border wall more than ever before. But will the American people buy this radical change of heart? Harris is betting on it with a brand new political ad. She took on drug cartels and jailed gang members for smuggling weapons and drugs across the border. As vice president, she backed the toughest border control bill in decades. Governor Huckabee, it is a radical change. It's an unbelievable change. It's one that almost made me fall out of my chair this morning. But I really want to remind our viewers, and I want to get your reaction to this. CNN, this is what actually happened with the border wall. Fly straight east out of Nogales, Arizona, and you'll pass miles of rolling border wall built during the President George W. Bush era. Then it reveals a construction zone frozen in time. Steel border wall bollards are left in stacks, and construction equipment sits on staging grounds. Just weeks before President Biden was inaugurated, the Trump administration pushed ahead to build a four-mile stretch of new border wall into the Patagonia Mountains. This is the end of the road, about 15 miles east of Nogales, Arizona. This is as far as the border wall construction got. Hmm. It's, it's amazing that she, with a straight face, goes out there and says, Walls don't work. And she does this for years. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to be strong on the border. Well, no, she's not. The closest she's been to strong on walls is appointing Tim Walls to be her vice president. <laughs> That's as close as she gets. From there, it's all downhill. But it's just an amazing thing. And you wonder, will the American people believe her? Because the only people who've been screaming about the walls are the Democrats who live behind walls. 
Nancy Pelosi has a wall. Joe mm. Biden has a wall around the White House. If they don't work, take them down. Let's see if they work. Well, speaking of uh, Tim Walls, you teed that up quite nicely. Tim Walls uh, has a message for his running mate. Listen to this. He talks about this wall. I always say, let me know how high it is. If it's 25 feet, then I'll invest in the 30-foot ladder factory. So will he invest in a ladder factory to defeat what the commander in chief, who he's supposed to serve, wants I mean, to do? Yeah, he, I mean, he can try. I would love the investment in American jobs. Hmm. That would be new from that side of the aisle. But I, I will say, sir, to, to your question, you know, I, I hope deeply that Americans do see through her. The clip that we showed from Oakland in 2019, remember, was the same speech she gave when she announced her now failed candidacy for president in the made up home that she's from because she was born in Berkeley, remember, but raised in Canada. And her throwing around the phrase transnational gangs to me sort of indicated a, a signal like, hey, guys, the prosecutors got it right. I'm on it. But the reality is that under her tenure in that state as district attorney across the bay in San Francisco and attorney general, senator for a minute and then vice president now, it has been ravaged by those transnational gangs, actually. Mm -hmm. The very city that she stood has been ravaged, all semblances of safety obliterated. And so for her to now say that I've changed my mind and all of the vitriol I spoke about President Trump is now, oh, on the whim of the fact that headlines now indicate the majority of Americans spoke this. Well, what about all of those Americans that are stuck in the Bay Area, that are stuck in California, that under her watch lost loved ones, that have had their livelihoods eroded? Her reciting a talking point from a teleprompter to me as a native Californian does nothing but simply indicate yet again her hypocrisy and her knee-jerk acquiescing to whatever liberal left talking point is in the prompter in front of her. But the question becomes, Dr. Sapphire, will the media let her get away with it? And this morning, the indication we have is from The Guardian. I mean, the headline about this story. Think about this. You go from saying it's a medieval project to now you embrace it. And The Guardian headline is Republicans accuse Kamala Harris of flip-flopping on border wall policy. That is crazy. Well, of course, they're going to let her get away with it. They're complicit in it because of the, the exact opposite headlines you see if Kamala Harris says something versus President Trump saying it as well. I mean, they really continue to show her in the favor. And let's just remember at this point, at the, she keeps continuing to say, oh, President Trump is the reason that the immigration bill didn't go through. He blocked the immigration bill, and he's the reason there's the migrant problem right now. He decided to block, or he, his influence, I guess he said that he didn't believe in that bill because it would allow far too many illegal crossings. It was unfairly tied to Ukrainian funding, and he thought it was a weak bill. But let's also remember the crisis we're in right now is because day one, Harris and Biden administration rolled back all of President Trump's policies at the southwest border. Rarely do I ever look to the culprit of a problem for the solution. And that's what she's <laughs> saying for us to do, that she's going to fix it, she caused the problem. Yeah, you know, John Carl, just before posing as a Kamala Harris surrogate in his interview with Tom Cotton, did ask Bernie <laughs> Sanders an important question. Watch this. But if you take a look at that ad, one thing that I found striking is if you look, and I think we have the, uh, the images here, there are at least three points in that ad that show the, bo the border wall, Donald Trump's border wall. Is it now the position of the Democrats that they favor the border wall? Well, you, you can ask the Harris campaign about that ad. That's the first that I've seen it. Bottom line is, I think there's wide recognition in this country, and we've had some success. I think the number of illegal immigrants coming in recently has gone sat down substantially. That is a major issue, and we've got to continue to do that. So given his track record, will he now grill the Kamala Harris campaign on this? And will progressives allow Kamala to get away with it? You this? know what? My reaction to that, Ed, is what happened to the Joy campaign, right? Like, this is <laughs> grim right. pictures of the border. <laughs> is she changing her idea on that, too? I mean, look, at the end of the day, she's co-opting the most popular ideas of Trump, right? President, Former President Trump has championed this cause for a long time. Now, here she comes. Hey, I'm kind of OK with that. If you really want to move to that side, of the aisle. It's okay by me. I think it makes more sense, certainly. But we have no indication that she will stay there, right? It's all flip-flopping and flip-flopping on a, a number of ideas and issues. I just hope that the Medicare for All truly is dead, because that would have cost us $47 trillion over 10 years, something we can't afford.
Yeah, first it was no tax on tips, and now she wants to build that wall. I mean, why even have a debate? Just say, I want that guy's policies. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.